Analysis of a patient's gait pattern is an essential feature of the physical examination of any portion of the spine and or lower extremity. Although walking is learned under normal circumstances, it is done without conscious effort and involves complete symmetry and reproducible timing. An understanding of normal gait is necessary in order to be able to detect alterations that may have pathological connotations. The normal gait cycle by convention occupies the period from heel strike of one leg to the next heel strike of the same leg and is divided into two phases. That portion in which the foot is in contact with the ground is known as the stance phase and accounts for approximately 60% of the normal gait cycle. That portion when the foot is off the ground is known as the swing phase and occupies approximately 40% of the cycle. Obviously, therefore, during two-thirds of the stance phase of one lower extremity, the opposite lower extremity is in the swing phase. In normal walking, both feet are on the ground for a period of time known as double stance or double support. With an increased rate of forward motion, such as in running, the double support is lost and in fact both feet are momentarily off the ground. Stance phase and swing phase may both be further broken down into components known as critical incidents, allowing the examiner to further define the abnormal aspect of gait. It will subsequently be seen that different pathologies affect different components of either the stance phase or the swing phase. Normal gait. The first part of the stance phase is known as heel strike and begins at the moment that the heel of the swing leg first makes contact with the ground. Note that the forefoot is not yet in contact with the ground and the knee is in full extension. Just prior to heel strike, contraction of the hamstring muscles serves to decelerate the limb which has just completed the swing phase. And just after heel strike, the quadriceps contracts strongly to prevent buckling of the knee. Foot flat. Following heel strike, there is then controlled relaxation of the foot and ankle dorsiflexors to allow the forefoot to come into contact with the ground. As the opposite extremity progresses through the swing phase, the body weight becomes centered momentarily over the supporting foot and this period is known as mid-stance. Heel off. As the body weight passes further forward over the supporting foot, the gastrocnemius soleus complex contracts causing plantar flexion of the foot and ankle to occur, giving rise to the heel off position in preparation for the final critical incident of the stance phase known as toe-off. As the forefoot leaves the ground, the extremity now enters the swing phase of gait. Like stance phase, the swing phase can also be broken down into various periods. Acceleration or initial swing. Just prior to toe-off, the iliopsoas muscle contracts to propel the leg forward by flexing the hip. This also results in knee flexion, which raises the leg, enabling the foot to clear the ground. The foot and ankle dorsiflexors also contract to give further clearance from the ground. Mid-swing. Mid-swing is that portion of the cycle when the swing leg advances through and in front of the opposite leg, which is concurrently in the mid-stance phase. Deceleration. The leg in the swing phase 
must be slowed down just prior to heel strike, and this is brought about by contraction of the hamstrings and gluteus maximus, and is known as the deceleration period of the swing phase. At heel strike, one then begins another gait cycle. As well as the various components previously discussed, there are several other components of gait which the examiner must observe. Pelvic tilt, pelvic rotation, lateral shift, width of base, stride length, and step length. Pelvic tilt. During normal gait, the pelvic crest on the side of the swing leg drops approximately five degrees below the horizontal at mid stance of the opposite leg. Pelvic rotation. During the swing phase, the pelvis on the ipsilateral side rotates approximately four degrees anteriorly, while on the stance side, the pelvis rotates four degrees posteriorly. Lateral shift. During the stance phase of normal gait, the pelvis and trunk shift approximately one inch towards the stance phase leg. Pelvic tilt, pelvic rotation, and lateral shift in combination with knee flexion and knee, foot, and ankle motion serve to minimize the shift in the body center of gravity in both the vertical and horizontal axis. This results in conservation of energy during normal gait. Any interference with the normal motions, such as imposed by a brace or an arthritic joint, will result in increased energy expenditure. Width of base. With the examiner standing behind the patient, Note that the normal base is from two to four inches wide. This is determined by the horizontal distance between the feet at the time of double stance or double support. Stride length and step length. The stride length is defined as the distance from the point of heel strike of one foot to the point of the heel strike of the same foot. The step length is the distance from the point of heel strike of one foot to the heel strike of the other foot. In normal gait, the stride lengths for both legs are equal. And the step lengths for both the left and the right leg will be equal. Any abnormality in the various components of the stance phase or swing phase, or in any of the other components of gait, suggests that there is pathology which should be identified by the examiner.